It is Monday, August 6th, 2012, and this is the latest on Tropical Storm Ernesto. As of the latest 5 p.m. Eastern Time Advisory from the National Hurricane Center, maximum sustained winds are 65 miles per hour, and Ernesto is forecast to become a Category 1 hurricane by 2 p.m. Tuesday. Hurricane warnings are now in effect for the entire coast of Belize, and those warnings extend northward up a good portion of the eastern Yucatan coastline. Also, tropical storm watches and warnings are still in effect for much of Honduras. The latest tropical model guidance is in very good agreement with the official forecast track of taking the center of tropical storm Ernesto inland somewhere to the east of Chetumal, Mexico, and to the north of Belize City, but interest across this entire region should be bracing for minimal hurricane conditions, and even if you don't experience hurricane conditions, those tropical storm impacts will still be in the form of severe squalls and some very strong and potentially even damaging winds, not to mention the risk of heavy rainfall and isolated flooding, especially in higher terrain. The following is the most recent microwave satellite pass of Tropical Storm Ernesto captured within the past hour, and you can tell that Ernesto has become much better defined compared to just 24 hours ago. We can see the beginnings of an inner circulation and inner core, and the storm just needs to become a little bit more concentrated over the next 24 hours before it may potentially begin to strengthen a little bit more steadily here as it begins to move a little bit more into the open waters of the West Caribbean and away from northern Honduras before making landfall along the Yucatan Peninsula. Ernesto was well on its way to becoming a minimal hurricane earlier this afternoon when we saw the signs of a small eye starting to form but that eye feature has since become a little bit more cloud filled and the pressure as being recorded by the hurricane hunters is no longer dropping like it was earlier this morning and early on in the day. However, this is more than likely just a temporary fluctuation in the storm's intensity as conditions still appear to be favorable and we see that the outflow pattern in all quadrants of the storm is continuing to improve and other than some minor dry air centered over Central America the mid to upper level pattern being portrayed by the water vapor is very favorable for steady strengthening. We've got upper level ridging now fully in place here to the south of Cuba and this is thanks to the upper level low that is swirling about over the central and western Gulf of Mexico. The University of Wisconsin wind shear analysis confirms that we have upper level ridging located directly above the strengthening tropical storm. Wind shear values are less than five knots and of course, sea surface temperatures across this portion of the globe are very favorable for continued intensification. Several days ago, the main concern for the United States Gulf Coast was the forecast of troughing out across the southeast United States. If Ernesto were to have intensified a little bit earlier in the Caribbean, while it was just to the east of Jamaica, it would have taken a more northerly track and then made it more susceptible to being turned to the north completely by the troughing that is starting to take shape across Alabama and Georgia. To the contrary, however, Ernesto is just now beginning to get its act together and it has already started to miss the connection with this trough and there is absolutely no chance of this trough inducing a more northerly turn. Instead, over the next 48 to 72 hours, Ernesto is likely to make another turn back toward the west as it becomes captured to the south of this subtropical ridge that is very strong and centered over New Mexico and Texas. So Ernesto continues to be no threat to the United States, but a landfall along the Yucatan Peninsula is a guarantee. And then the next question will be, will it move into the open waters of the Bay of Campeche just enough to where it could possibly re-strengthen before making a secondary landfall within Mexico? The following is the latest six-day sea level pressure forecast from the GFS model and you can easily see tropical storm Ernesto located to the northeast of Honduras and over the next 48 or so hours the storm is forecast to continue to intensify under favorable conditions and then it begins to make landfall along the Yucatan within the next 36 to 48 hours Ernesto could easily be a category 1 hurricane and depending on the rate of intensification interest there along the Yucatan coast should be bracing for the worst case scenario and there is that chance that Ernesto could strengthen beyond the current intensity forecast so it would be wise to at least plan for the possibility of Ernesto making landfall as at least a category 2 hurricane. Finally as we press deeper into the forecast period between 48 and 72 hours the GFS has the storm emerging back into the open waters 
of the Bay of Campeche. We cannot rule out more strengthening, and there is a chance that Ernesto could attain hurricane status once again if that inner core is able to stay offshore for just enough time before a potential landfall somewhere near Veracruz, Mexico. This is the 72-hour vertical wind shear forecast to go along with the sea level pressure that we just observed. And you can see that upper level ridging is forecast to move into the southwest gulf along with Ernesto. So the wind shear and the sea surface temperatures are likely to both be conducive. So the only thing that is going to limit the storm from intensifying will be land interaction. I would also like to mention that once Ernesto is all said and done, we are likely to see more tropical activity in the Atlantic Basin within the next couple of weeks. Not only because of climatology, considering that we're moving toward the middle half of August, but also some of the model forecasts that we are seeing. One of those being the latest seven-day forecast from the GFS. You see a very strong tropical wave exiting the coast of Africa, and it is trying to develop this tropical wave into a depression or storm. Towards days 6 and 7, the GFS is also showing a lot of upper-level ridging across the central and eastern Atlantic, so this would also help to mitigate some of the vertical wind shear that we could otherwise see out toward the coast of Africa. One parameter that could disrupt any chances for development is that if the tropical wave exits the coast of Africa too far toward the north, say around 20 degrees north latitude, then sea surface temperatures are marginal at best, unless the system were to continue moving due westward and then eventually make it into the central and western Atlantic where they finally become over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in terms of the 500 millibar steering, one interesting thing however is that unlike most storms that exit the coast and rapidly get turned more toward the north by troughing, this model, at least for now, is showing a lot of ridging out across the central Atlantic, so this may give this particular wave a slightly higher than average chance of making it all the way across into the western Atlantic, but that would take at least another 10 days for that to occur, so this is a highly speculative forecast. Meanwhile, the latest six-day forecast from the ECMWF is not showing tropical cyclone development, but it is showing the same tropical wave having an associated 1014 millibar surface low associated with it, but in terms of the 500 millibar steering, the GFS and ECMWF have a lot more similarities. For example, you see the subtropical ridging that is out across much of the Atlantic, and the ridging is forecast to remain relatively strong just to the north of where this wave would be, and you can see this being forecast by the ECMWF all the way through day 10, so this also gives some credibility to the idea that this wave axis might have a good shot at eventually moving into the West Atlantic but it's still far too early to say exactly what the chances are of this thing developing into a tropical storm or hurricane. Interestingly enough, tropical storm Ernesto has developed in a period that was not supposed to be overly conducive for Atlantic Basin activity. As you can see, much of the basin is still being dominated by a lot of sinking air in the upper levels, and this promotes subsidence and dry air and a lacking amount of convection. However, the favorable pulse of the MGO which is still responsible for typhoon activity that is ongoing across the West Pacific, will be moving closer to the Atlantic Basin between August 15th and August 20th. So even if the tropical wave that is forecast to exit Africa in a week or so does not develop, we are likely to see multiple tropical disturbances that will bear some watching. So I will leave you on this Monday evening, August 6th, with a final look at the latest visible satellite animation of Tropical Storm Ernesto. Again, this is a much more impressive storm than we were looking at just yesterday, and hopefully all interests along the eastern half of the Yucatan Peninsula are preparing wisely for this storm, as it is likely to become a hurricane before landfall, and this includes all of our fans and friends that are located in San Pedro, Belize. I know we've got a big audience down there. Please take your precautions and follow all of the advice from your local officials before this storm begins to deteriorate the weather conditions around you. So thanks again for watching. Keep it tuned to 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app. We will be providing more updates all the way throughout the duration of landfall and even into the time when Ernesto begins to move into the southern gulf.